So if you clicked on this video, you're probably suffering from acne or something along those lines. And if you want to know how you can naturally transform your face from this to this, this is the right video for you. Let me give you a little backstory on my face and my skin transformation. So in this first photo, this was me not taking care of my face at all. I really didn't do a lot other than just shower. I, I may wash my face in the shower. I don't even remember exactly what I was doing. But I was not doing anything for my face. And as you can see, it got really out of control. I then naturally transformed my face from that to this. And I did that in about a two to three month time period. However, after I did this, I got distracted. I got lazy with taking care of myself. And I kind of forgot some of the things I had done. And so not only that, but because I am a teenager, I had some hormone changes and it just made my face a whole lot worse. Because of that, my face ended up going back to looking kind of like this. However, at this point, I was so done and I was so ready to just get rid of my acne. I did get on Accutane and this was the final result. I'm still not done with my face and I'm still not completely happy with where I'm at. I still got a little bit of scarring and stuff like that, but overall it's gotten way, way better. And overall, I feel a lot more confident in myself and just in, in general. So, yeah, if you're looking to improve your face, this is the right video for you. I got 11 tips that you can do naturally to help improve your face right now. Now, I also have two extras that are kind of just, they're not big enough for a full topic, but I'll throw them in there at the end. So the one thing that you need to be sure of is if you do decide to do these things, you need to make sure that you're consistent with it because that's the only way it's gonna work. It's obviously better to try some of the natural options that I'm about to give you before you go and just hop on Accutane. Because one, these things that I'm gonna give you, very cheap, or even inexpensive or free. Accutane on the other hand can be expensive and so obviously that's not better and anything natural is obviously going to be better. Washing your face. Make sure you wash it with a cleanser. Icing your face. Make sure that you start icing your face. Eat less sugar and dairy. If you can't eat less sugar and dairy your acne can still stay inflamed so don't give it that option you got to find replacements or just cut it out do not pop your pimples don't do it don't give in to the urges and temptations avoid shaving with multi-blade razors get yourself an electric razor man moisturize your face you got to keep your skin healthy and hydrated moisturize use your sunscreen don't risk getting a sunburn. Don't risk the damage to the skin. Your skin is going to be damaged if you don't use sunscreen. Take panathenic acid or vitamin B5. It's the same thing. Take it. It's good for you. It reduces oil. Use retinol at night. It's going to be good for you. It's going to help clear out your pores. Take it. CMOS. Not only does it have all of these crazy healing aspects, but it's going to heal your face gonna get rid of your acne scars. Get good sleep. Your body needs time to recover. Get your sleep. Drink your water. Eat your fruits and vegetables. You're gonna heal your skin with me. So, the number one thing I have for to clear your acne is to wash your face. I would recommend you wash your face twice a day. Once in the morning, once before you go to bed. A minimum of two times per day. 
anytime you exercise or you start sweating, I'd wash your face. Just because you gotta keep your skin clean of all the bacteria and sweat and dirt that you might be getting on your face. And if you don't clean it, it's just gonna sit and then it's gonna absorb into your skin. And when, when, when that happens, it's uh, gonna get in your pores, obviously, and it's gonna give you acne. So when you wash your face, there's a couple things. Obviously, you wanna make sure that you got water, but the thing I love to use to wash my face is this soap right here. Is it even a soap? Perfect. This stuff right here. But it's the Survey Hydrating Cream the Foam Cleanser. And the reason I love this is because it's not too strong for my face. And being on Accutane or if you're out in the sun a lot, that's better for me and because uh, I have sensitive skin. However, whenever my Accutane was really bad, I used this. This is CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. And this has 4% benzyl peroxide, which is an acne treatment. And I'll talk more about that later, but uh, that one was a little bit too strong for my face, but it was really good to begin with whenever I did have acne on my face. So that was that's what I would recommend starting out with. But you also got to be careful to make sure you wash it all off your face before you put on uh, like clothes or wipe your towels because it could stain your uh, stuff. It, it could stain your clothes. So the second thing I have to help you clear your acne is icing your face. So icing your skin can help bring down inflammation, reducing itching, and can also reduce redness by constricting the blood vessels. So basically, if your face is really red and it has a bunch of pimples on it, icing your face will help calm your face down almost. So I really recommend that. So basically, all the things that ice, icing can do for you is it minimizes pores, tightens the skin, smoother skin, burns fat, reduces dark circles and puffiness, it helps with circulation, and it reduces wrinkles and lines. Now, that's just from ice. That's just frozen water. And to think that just frozen water can do that for your face is just pretty amazing. I used to ice my face a lot, and I probably should start doing it again just so I can get some uh, smoother skin, because that's what my goal is. So. But here's what you need to know if you want to ice your face. So start with icing a small period of time. If you do it too much at first, it can actually irritate your skin, depending on who you are. I don't know. You might be able to just start off by icing a bunch, but I would recommend icing for short periods of time more. Then once you get used to it, then you can actually start icing for longer periods of time. So. The two ways I would recommend you ice is the first, you can use an ice cube and rub it on your face. For me, I like to use a paper towel to hold on one end because it does get really cold in your fingers. But I like to do that and then I'll rub on this certain spots and um, just red spots on my face. And then the second thing is you can fill up a little bucket with cold water or ice water and you can uh, dunk your face in it. It sounds a little silly, but it really does work, so. Alright, moving on to number three. Eat less sugar and dairy. This was a game changer for me. And I really wish that I had implemented it sooner. Because eating less sugar eliminates spikes in your blood sugar. And when your blood sugar spikes, it causes inflammation throughout your body. These spikes can also cause your body to make more oil on your skin. And more oil on your skin is not good for acne. So, don't eat a lot of sugar. Whenever I first uh, was clearing up my face, I cut out sugar completely almost. Like, except for natural sugars, like, obviously, you need some sugars. 
but like obviously I'd still admit apples, bananas, natural sugars, of course, yes, but like any sort of man-made sugar food, I cut it out. I was eating clean and um, the dairy, so consuming too much dairy triggers inflammation in the body, exasperating acne. Whenever I was clearing my face up, I would stay away from the dairy. I found alternatives. So for milk, I started drinking coconut milk. I didn't drink, some people may like almond milk. I didn't like almond milk. I drank coconut milk. And I also switched over to coconut yogurt, which I still eat to this day. So you gotta find out how you can avoid some of that dairy. Cause dairy is going to make is going to uh, put your body in a state where it's very easy to get inflamed. So you gotta keep an eye on the food you eat, try and eliminate high sugar foods, or find good sugar-free alternatives. Number four, do not pop your pimples. Popping pimples can push bacteria and pus deeper into your skin, which might cause more swelling and <laughs> which might cause more swelling and redness don't pop your pimples it's better to let a pimple run through its lifespan if you leave a pimple alone it will heal itself in three to seven days however if popped incorrectly it can linger for weeks or even longer it can also turn into scarring which is what you want to avoid so don't pop your pimples please if you develop a pimple, you can use benzoyl peroxide on the spot and help dry the area of oil, which in turn will help the pimple go away. However, your skin after using this will be sensitive to sunlight, so make sure that you're using a sunscreen with an FPS of at least, at least 30. At least 30. Your skin will be sensitive. Your skin already is sensitive. You need to be using sunscreen, okay? Number five. Avoid shaving with multi-blade razors. So, when shaving your face with a wet razor, you run the risk of getting a razor burn, which can create blisters and pimples. But not only this, you also run the risk of getting ingrown hairs because in these multi-blade razors, there's three or four blades. The first blade cuts the hair on the outside of the skin, while the rest cut the hair back into your skin. This makes for a clean cut However, it drastically increases the likelihood for ingrown hairs, especially in men. So, for the longest time, I used this multi-blade razor. I was using this razor up until two weeks. Nah, my power just went out. No way, okay. Alright, so my power just went out, but... So I was using these multi -blade. No way! Alright. Hopefully this works this time. So, I was using these multi-blade razors up until two weeks ago. And I was starting to get acne down here because I was shaving against the grain of the hair for a smooth shave. And I was, I was starting to get acne down there. So, I would avoid these uh, types of razors. What I would... What I would recommend is to stick to an electric razor. And you still get a clean cut. It's not as good as the wet razor, as these multi-blade razors. However, it's not going to leave you with the chances of getting blisters or ingrown hairs. It's, it's still gonna look good though. You just might have to do it more often. And like always with shaving, I advise you to take your time and be gentle. If you go too fast or are rough on your face, even with the electric razor, you can still scrape up your skin. So don't, don't worry, just take your time and you'll be all right. Number six, moisturize your face. So, oh my God. So basically my power just went out and so I'm gonna have to finish this video. Uh, recording it. It won't be, a, it'll just be a second for you guys, but I'm, I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow to actually finish. So, it's been a full 24 hours for me. 
because last night I lost power and electricity. And so I know it's only been a moment for you guys, but it's been a full 24 hours for me. And so I think we're on number six. So number six, moisturize your face. Moisturizing your face helps protect the skin's barrier from irritation. Mo using moisturizer can help create a barrier between your face and the elements. So like cold, dryness, all this stuff, it creates a barrier between your skin and the elements. And that right there is going to help protect your face. Also, it's really healthy for your face because putting moisturizer on is going to help hydrate your skin. This is one of the most simple things that I do that I wish I had done for a lot longer. I wish I had started sooner because I noticed a big change whenever I started doing it. It's like the missing piece of the puzzle. If you don't moisturize your face, you need to because it's just going to bring your face all together. Number seven, use sunscreen. Even if you're not out in the sun all the time, you need to be wearing sunscreen in the day because sunscreen helps prevent sunburns, skin cancer, and premature aging. Like I said earlier, if you're not using sunscreen with at least a 30 FPS, you need to, at least a 30. I personally use a 70 FPS. I use this sunscreen right here. This is the sunscreen I use. I'll put the link to all of my products, all the products that I'm using. I'll put a link in the description. So if you're interested in using any of them, just go look in the description. I'll hook you guys up. The one thing you need to know about the FPS is that the higher it is, the more protected from the sun you are. Number eight, take panathenic acid, also known as vitamin B5. Panathenic acid basically reduces your production of oil. It promotes the breakdown of the skin's oil glands. Vitamin B5 is also shown to improve the epidermal barrier function, which in turn helps to reduce acne breakouts. This was something that when I started taking it, I saw extreme growth speed in my healing process of my face. I only saw this type of growth when I started taking it consistently. Number nine, use retinol before you go to bed. What retinol can do for you is it increases your cell, your skin cell production. It helps unclog your pores. Retinol also exfoliates your skin and increases collagen production, which can reduce the appearance of lines and wrinkles, giving your skin a fresher appearance. You want to make sure that you're using this right before you go to bed because like benzoyl peroxide, it can make your skin more sensitive to the sun. But if you're using your FPS and your sunscreen like you're supposed to, benzoyl peroxide should not be a problem for you. What I recommend is right before you go to sleep, I would recommend you wash your face with the cleanser, then moisturize, and then apply the retinol. I'll link retinol in the description. Number 10, sea moss. Now, for this one, I haven't actually used it, but I've heard so many great things from all my friends who have used it, and I'm going to use it soon. So I thought I'd put this in there because it has so many great functions. So basically, with sea moss, it's a natural remedy that clears clogged pores, absorbs excess oil, fights bacterial infections, and balances the skin's micro-membranes. It even can help get rid of these acne scars. I have acne scars still. They're a little bit hard to see now because I have been working on my skin really hard, but I'm gonna start taking it because I wanna get rid of all my acne scars. I'm going for that clear face, and I know you are too. So, I would recommend you check out CMOS. Now, there will be a link for this in my description, but this is will be but this will be the only link that's not linked directly to Amazon. And let me tell you, there is a good reason for that. So basically, I have a friend by the name of No Fleming who runs a company called 
Fleming Fruit. And the reason I'm linking them, not because he's my friend, but because his products are authentic. All of these other companies that you might see, you have to do your background research into them because they could be selling you fake CMOS, which could actually harm you. Now, the difference is, is that fake CMOS, fake CMOS is a lot easier to grow. People can grow in their pools. People can like just create it. And it's just, it wouldn't be helpful. It could actually harm you. And so you gotta be really careful with who you trust. And Fleming Fruit gets their CMOS straight from Jamaica straight off the rocks that's how you know it's legit and so i will be putting a link straight to their website in the description i would really recommend you check it out i'm going to be checking it out right after this so because not only is it cmos good for your face it has so many other healing properties that i wouldn't want to miss out on so number nine you hear it all the time but i don't not very many people do it it's get good sleep during your sleep, your body repairs itself. And it repairs itself in your muscles if you worked out. It repairs itself in general. It refreshes. This includes the skin. And if you're not getting enough sleep, your body's not going to have enough time to heal your skin. So getting good sleep can have a positive impact on inflamed skin, which in turn reduces acne. Science says that we need at least 8 hours of good sleep to see positive results. But, I think we should be getting closer to 10 hours of sleep. Sleep is a necessary thing that we need to do in order to heal and repair our bodies. So, giving the body more time to rest will only impact us positively. Also, make sure that when you're sleeping, you're sleeping clean. This includes making sure that you've washed your face and your body. But not only that, you should be making sure that you're sleeping in a clean environment. So making sure that you have a clean pillowcase and covers and all the, whatever you sleep in. Make sure it's clean. Because if not, you could be putting dirt and all that stuff and just letting it sit on your skin all night long. So make sure you're sleeping clean. Now the two extras are kind of just... I don't know, I didn't feel like there was enough to actually make a whole topic about it, but I wanted to just throw it in there. Obviously, you gotta drink a lot of water. So, drinking water is very beneficial to you. We all know that, right? So just don't forget your water. And then also eating lots of organic fruits and vegetables can be very good for your skin. So, those were all of the things that helped me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I really hope that I helped you. Everything that I talked about in this video is going to be linked in the description. So go check it out. Don't waste time. Get started on your skin. I love you guys. Peace.